just as a human being, I believe that if you have the opportunity to, you ought to do what you can to protect life. As an elected official, I've got an obligation to all my constituents, and certainly that would include the idea of protecting their lives from things like death trends that are proposed to come right through the county. While other entities have stopped fighting against Virgin Trains, formerly known as Brightline in All Aboard Florida, Indian River County Commissioner Bob Solari remains vigilant with both a federal and a state lawsuit against the company. We have been fighting a corporate entity which basically lied to us from the start. But a lot of people didn't believe when we said that deaths were going to occur, that they were unconcerned with safety. A lot of people bought into the corporate myth that they were going to do everything they could for safety. What do you do to have high-speed rail as a safe project? You have a dedicated high-speed rail line. That's the first thing. You don't put high-speed rail on the same tracks as slow commuter trains or freight trains, which are what they were going to do here. More importantly, you don't have at-grade crossings. There are 382 at-grade crossings that each one individually could cause tremendous problems. Over 24 people have died, and that is a sad statement again, both for the failure of government and the failure of this corporate entity. One of those deaths was at this crossing in Hollywood, a young man killed chasing after his dog. People will say, well, it's trespassing. Well, it's because the tracks are in high density urban areas and people live on one side of the track and they want to get to the other side of the track. So. It, we know we have that, so why aren't we taking into account safety measures to protect people? We do it when we build highways. You know, you see the, the walls on major highways. Senator Mayfield's reattempted high-speed rail safety legislation in 2020 addresses fencing, improved at-grade crossings, and more state oversight for trains running from 81 to 125 miles per hour. A companion bill was filed by State Representative Tyler Sorois, a trained proponent who shares Mayfield safety concerns. And if we don't do something, then it's shame on us for not being proactive to protect our citizens. In fact, a third-party rail study, the OPAGA report, found that Florida's passenger rail system incurs a higher rate of severe injuries and fatalities than the national average. The report found there is also a gap in federal and state regulations governing higher speed rail. Among the recommendations for the Florida Department of Transportation, setting minimum grade crossing design standards, setting requirements for fencing along railroad corridors, creating guidelines for sealed corridor treatment along railroad corridors. And in that OPAGA study, it showed multiple things that the train could have done. More importantly, it clearly demonstrated that the Florida Department of Transportation has a role to play in the safety of this project, but they've basically ignored it. And also, importantly for me, is it showed that there are a series of best management practices for high-speed rail which are possible to implement, but which Virgin Trains hasn't implemented. Most of us believe that the simple reason that the trains has not implemented them is simply because they want to save money. So they value a few dollars over here a lot more than they value human life anywhere on the east coast of Florida. 31 people have died. So my question is, how do you sleep at night? At a recent informational meeting in Jupiter, Virgin Trains Vice President of Government Affairs Rusty Roberts insisted safety was its top priority, but the overwhelming majority of the audience wasn't buying it. We are concerned citizens and we care about our community. I am totally against these high-speed trains running through our small communities, highly populated communities. It's dangerous. Virgin Trains says the West Palm to Orlando route should be operational in mid-2022. People are used to freight trains going 40 miles per hour. And note, the down where these deaths are occurring, the trains aren't going more than 80 miles per hour. So still, well under the 110 mile speeds that they're going to be going through in the Treasure Coast. So when it gets up to the Treasure Coast, things are going to be happening even a lot faster. The one thing we know about this train is that as it comes, and if it does come north, deaths are going to continue. And as long as those deaths continue, we will continue the fight against the train. 
join this critical effort to save more people from injury and death, go to the Guardians of Martin County's Citizens Against the Train Fund and make a tax-deductible donation. Nothing matters more than citizen safety.